All right, everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Alex here, and I'm here with my sister. And I know everybody told me to do this video for a long time now. Hey, Alex, do a video with your sister. Just uh, have a chat with her, you know, with your sibling. And um, it's here, it's finally here. We are having a chat. <laughs> Yay. So <laughs> my sister is in Emirates, I'm in the Dihad. Hi guys, I'm Patricia, I'm uh, Alex's sister. And I just joined Emirates in February. I'm almost a year here. Almost a year here, that's good. Um, it's like, it's like it just happened and now it's already one year. So fast, I just, lifestyle here is very, very fast paced. So I can't even realize that it's been a year already. Yeah, it's, it's, that's one of the things with this job, you know, it just, it passes so quickly because you have a flight, you come back, you have another flight, you come back and yeah. it's already two weeks. <laughs> it yeah, just... exactly, exactly. So it can be very crazy. True. So we're in this apartment, which you just moved to now. Yes. So I just moved here in a Grosvenor Tower. It's located on Sheikh Zayed Road. It's near Museum of Future, so amazing location. I was very lucky. I swapped my accommodation. I was living in Sarab, so it was a bit tough. Which is like the desert. Yeah, it was. But it's nice, you know, I, I liked it there, to be honest. It's not that bad. Like It's, it's cozy, you know, yeah. it's cozy. I mean, I was with my friends, all of my batchmates were there, so it was like a cozy crew neighborhood, but Location-wise, it's a bit far from everything, so... Right now, we're sitting next to the Museum of the Future and Emirates has the accommodation here yeah. in the middle of the city, basically, in downtown, which is yeah. crazy. Like, it's it's very nice. You go downstairs, grab... A, alive. <laughs> exactly. Grab a coffee and you just see Burj Khalifa right there. Like, it's just... It's too much. It's crazy, right? And, uh, you know, my accommodation is quite far from the city itself, from the Corniche in Abu Dhabi, but it's, um, let's say it's close to the airport. So that's another benefit. But here you're not that far from the airport as well. No, I'm like uh, no. 20 minutes by bus. So it's, it's even 20, 25 minutes, but we have one more stop at another accommodation. So if I were to take a taxi, like 15, 20 minutes maximum. So it's a really good location. So you are in Emirates in Dubai now for one year. I mean, Etihad for like six plus years, but uh, for one year, how do you feel in Dubai? How is the trans transition from Romania to out here in the, in the desert? Well, it was quite heavy from different perspectives because it's so different. It's first of all, it's big city life compared to small city life, yeah. which I kind of loved in many ways. But I wanted to experience more, so I literally got what I wanted. I wanted to meet new people, I wanted new experiences, I wanted to travel, I got all of it. So it's amazing from that point of view. Mm -hmm. But also Dubai life can be quite hard from another point of view. It can be like overwhelming. It needs, it requires time to adapt. That's what I would say. But now I feel more, a bit more like home here, so. That's good. Well, you have me, at least. <laughs> I helped her with I helped her with the furniture and all that stuff at the beginning. Yeah, a little, at the beginning. A, a little bit. A little, a little bit. Yeah. He's a good brother sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, no, no. That, 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 if you live abroad, and I think if you live abroad with your sister close yeah. by, like no, it's you different. just. You, I was lucky. I was lucky because I was. You come here and you you literally feel alone in the world. That's true. <laughs> So I had my brother with me, which was uh, very nice. much, very helpful. So at least I had that. <laughs> yeah, true. Because most of you guys, if there is somebody that will move to Dubai or Abu Dhabi or UAE in general, and you go for a job, uh, probably you'll end up, you know, just uh, you move by yourself, you move alone. Some people, they move with their families, but that's a rare occasion. That means you're probably younger and your family moved for work and then you're with your family. But as an adult, you probably will move by uh, by yourself. So you just have to, you know, make the best out of it. Find people you can relate to. Yes. And also what's different, like first thing is moving to a big city like Dubai. And the second thing is adapting to the job, oh, which yeah. is not a normal job. It's uh, <laughs> like you're you're gone, you come back, you're gone, you just go and you travel and you're never home. And then, so it's a crazy lifestyle. It's it's very nice from, from a lot of points of view, but... The life of a cabin crew. Yeah. Indeed. It's exciting, yeah. that, that I can say, it's very exciting. And you did mention the smaller city. So we come from uh, the city of Oradia in Romania, which is a very, very nice city, by the way. It's an amazing city in Romania. I think it's the 
they invest the most out of the whole Romania in yeah. our city right now. But obviously, it's a small city. It has like what two hundred ten thousand people. Like it's it's a it's a smaller city compared to Dubai. Dubai has what three million five hundred. Yeah, Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, every time I come here to Dubai from Abu Dhabi, and by the way, they're just an hour difference away, so we're very close to each other anyway. Uh, but here, if I take a wrong turn with my car, freaking, like, it, it's, it's <laughs> a detour of 20 minutes more on my GPS. So I'm like, no, not again. I'm scratching my face, but keeping, keeping it up, keep going. Yeah, that's what one you have of, to do. One of the good things in Dubai. <laughs> you miss True. an exit, you you you're in uh, Abu Dhabi already. <laughs> yeah, no, we have like this joke like if you miss an exit from Abu Dhabi, you'll uh, end up in Saudi, or <laughs> <laughs> if you miss an exit from Dubai, you end up in Oman. So yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, how about the summer? So right now we're in the winter. It's still what is it? January still, still New Year. Happy New Year for everybody. Um, but uh, how about the summer? Because you came at, in spring, right? I came in February. So oh, February, yeah. Okay. Well, so it was I still came, nice. It was nice. It was nice. But then. But then, yeah. Basically, I had training for two months and something, and then I started flying. By the time I started flying, the summer kind of started. So it was really hard. It. I was grateful for every flight I had because I was gone <laughs> from Dubai. It was. It's insane to adapt to the, the heat, but mostly you do only uh, uh, indoor activities. Otherwise, nothing, nothing outdoors. So you just have to survive the summer, like three, four months you have to survive because now the weather is perfect. Now it's amazing. Like I love it so much. So the rest of the year, it's very cozy, very nice, but uh, the summer is just unbearable. <laughs> Yeah, true. You have to get used to the summer, and uh, the summer is basically you spend your time in malls, you yeah. spend the time in cafes, which is not my favorite thing to do. Indoor places. I mean, either I like to go out. I like. To I like go nature. Beach, I, like, I like trees. Exactly. <laughs> I like trees as well. We have trees here. We don't have many. trees. Oh come on! There are some <laughs> trees. <laughs> not enough, but you know. Yeah, in Romania we have a lot of no, trees. No, like uh, yeah, I, I want trees, man. I want to see green everywhere. There's some <laughs> trees outside here we're building, you know, and you see the the you see the Sheikh Zayed Road and some trees there. The parking lot. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> there are trees, guys. Don't believe her. There's some trees here. No, but obviously, no, coming from Romania, yeah, obviously it's, it's a bit different. different with nature and all of that stuff. Many people say, oh, don't go to Dubai, it's like it's a fake city and everything. And I, I tend to disagree with that a little bit. Obviously, the, all the infrastructure and everything, everything is new. You know, the, the city is basically, you know, the city elevated itself starting in 95. So let's say it has, what, less than 30 years, this whole uh, concoction of, of skyscrapers and stuff. And I find that quite... Uh, Thrilling, exciting and stuff. And you know, Abu Dhabi is actually a bit older. If you go to Corniche, if you go to the seaside of Abu Dhabi, the buildings are a bit older. Um, they're lower profile. They're not so uh, tall as in Dubai. So um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. But uh, I don't know. I just I just like uh, I, I like this kind of novelty about the city. Yeah, I guess. I mean, for me, it was a thing to adapt to because yeah. at first, you know, being used to Romania to a totally different style, mm -hmm. it was a bit hard. Now I appreciate that I have the sea here. You know, I it's uh, I have the beach. I can go to the beach. I can walk to the beach, which is amazing. From now, from this location, not from the desert. You can walk to the. I mean, yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's a long far. walk, but it's, it's like walk, but it's... 30, 40 minutes walk. So. Yeah, we can actually see the the, the yeah. sea from here from the window. Yeah, it's so pretty it's, nice, it's, yeah. it's pretty nice. So I guess you have a bit of everything here in Dubai. This is the truth. Everything that you want to. If you want to go skydiving, you can go sky. If you want to go deep diving, you, you can do that. There's the deepest pool for that. So there's everything. That's literally true. everything you want. You can have it here, but you need to adapt to the style. It's That's true. different. It's your first podcast. Yeah. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to go out of my comfort zone sometimes. <laughs> That's the spirit. Always go out of your comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just for uh, people outside that they want to have a cabin crew job or to apply on those type of jobs, uh, tell them what is your age, 
I'm 26. All right, and your height? My height is 176. 176, so my sister is quite tall. tall. We're all tall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a tall family. Our brother is the tallest. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, we're all taller than our parents though. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, isn't this usually the case like your kids will be taller than the parents because I don't know, evolution or something, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what they say. <laughs> Have you seen people in Netherlands? Well, uh, my father was insisting for us to do sports when we were children. <laughs> so maybe that's the reason they say that it helps. I don't know. It, uh, yeah, it, it definitely, definitely helps. And uh, okay, speaking of your height and your age and everything, how was the interview experience with Emirates? Well, for me, I didn't feel no pressure, no problem with the height and uh, image and uniform standards, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know that if you're uh, smaller, you can have quite the issue because you need to reach a certain, a certain uh, height. Uh, height. Yeah, and like with your hand, if you're on your... Elevated, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, probably you have the same 212 centimeters yeah, exactly. on your exactly. tiptoes, yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. But other than that, there are all kinds of heights, you know. It's just, that's the requirement, but... Absolutely. I've seen the diversity. <laughs> so Have you far. seen like two meters tall girl? No, no. 180 I've meters. seen. 180 meters. 180, yeah. yes. But taller than that, I don't think so. Not bad. Okay, how about the, the interview itself? Like, it was an open day? Well, my process was a bit different because it was at the end of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it was basically half of the interview or more was online. Mm -hmm. I did the higher view interview. Mm -hmm. which was uh, questions that I had to answer online and wh I was being filmed. So basically all the questions were about customer service experience. Okay. Which I highly recommend anyone applying for this job should have because it helps you with the job also. And uh, they basically you have to describe situation that happened uh, in your uh, previous job mm -hmm. regarding customer experience, customer service experience, and kind of those were the questions. Then I had, so I just passed through more stages. And at mm -hmm. the end, what was live was the final interview, which I had in Bucharest, which was live interview again to questions. I was asked to, to question. It took like 10 minutes. Okay. So it wasn't, I didn't, I barely felt it. <laughs> and it was just a question I answered and they measured my height. Nice. Yeah, and that was it. Then the guy was like, I'm going to contact you in uh, one to three weeks. So then three weeks passed and I was like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> but fourth week. Okay. I was given the, the golden call. It was five in the morning and I was waking up. I didn't understand anything. <laughs> was, was it the call or was it the email? No, it was a call. It okay. was a call. I was just calling. I woke up and I was, what? <laughs> so it was funny because I didn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell you. I only You didn't. You. That's, so that's yeah. the thing. At the point, my sister was like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm join, joining Emirates. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, what, you applied? Oh, I passed. I like, um, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Surprises. Point is, and I recommend this to anyone, uh, I didn't want to feel pressure or anything. So I was just like, I'm going to go to the interview, see if I make it. Mm -hmm. If I do, then I'm going to tell people. And if not, I'm still going to tell people, but I just don't want the pressure meanwhile. You know, meanwhile, passing the stages and all. Okay, but now the question comes because my viewers will probably ask that and they asked me a lot already is why didn't you join Etihad since I am in Etihad and stuff like that. I didn't want to be with you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, point is, um, this was during COVID. So the recruitment process was a bit, you know, weird. So with Etihad, I feel like I, I think I applied. I'm pretty sure I put my CV, but I didn't get an answer. I'm not sure if they were searching yet for... I think when you applied yeah. during COVID, we were not hiring. Yes. So you put your CV in and the then, system, uh, but non-contactable. You were exactly, not contacted. Yeah. Exactly. Something like this. So then I just applied for Emirates because for me, it was either Emirates or Etihad. Yeah. That's it. So I think they started earlier to recruit yeah, after COVID. Definitely. Emirates. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And now... Still recruiting, like Emirates recruiting a lot. Etihad, maybe a thousand plus crew in the next year. Like it's just like 
it's going Crazy, on yeah. and on because because of what because of you know new aircraft new destinations uh, expanding post covid yeah. just craziness and yeah it's good it's a good lot this of is new what joiners, we need. a lot <laughs> absolutely i know <laughs> full full of new joiners from uh, both airlines and actually all the airlines i think they experience growth in this period of time but anyway the point is good to have you here and a uh, nice place i like this apartment me too me too <laughs> um especially the location and uh, the question is now, uh, why did you apply for this job, having had a job in Romania that was good anyways? You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody asks me this question, of course. <laughs> so... Okay, what did you do before? Just before, to tell the, before tell the viewers. Before Emirates, I was a travel agent, actually. And I was also doing makeup and lashes, like I was on the... I was having a, my appointments. And I was working part-time in a travel agency. And it was a really nice job. Both of them were a nice job because I'm also, I'm drawing, I'm painting. I'm, I was also on the, always on the artistic side. So I was satisfying that with my, uh, with my appointments in beauty, in this beauty world. And also I was working at the travel agency. So I was still traveling a bit. I was going mostly to Tunisia, Egypt, Turkey, Greece, what's more accessible for Romania. But I still felt like I wanted a bit more. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I wanted to... It, it, life was like plain, a bit plain. So I wanted a bit of excitement. I wanted a bit of different, something different. Mm -hmm. I felt like there's a world out there that I need to see. So, And truth is, I have the privilege of always going back home and having the opportunity to continue the job. So I'm less true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, it's it's the same for for both of us. Basically, yeah. we we have security. I I, I yes. guess that's the yes. that's what I try to say. Like, if we go back to Romania now, like we're fine. Yes. So that's that's a good feeling, you know. It's exactly. a great feeling. Well, our parents they have a uh, this travel agency, travel agency uh, that small we can family continue, business. Yeah. So that's very good. Mm. But you you always feel the need to go on your own. To being see what you like, yeah, being depending like fully, it's yeah. such an experience. So I recommend to anyone doing this because I know how much I've grown since I'm here on a, an individual way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, it's very different. You grow a lot. You you go through a lot of experiences. You meet a lot of people. You're by yourself almost by myself. Almost. <laughs> almost. So and you get to see other cultures, other countries, other it's. It's totally different experience. And you also get to know maybe where you want to live in the future. A lot of people do that. They just see where they want to live. Like you visit so many countries with the job and then you, you exactly, say, okay, exactly. I like this place. Let's move in freaking uh, Cambodia. I don't know. Yeah, for, for me, that's <laughs> Bali. I kind of want to live in <laughs> Bali for a while. So Nice. Yeah. Globe trotter or something like that. Uh, I want to be a digital nomad, actually. <laughs> everybody wants the same thing, eh? <laughs> well, of course, but not everybody works for it, so. But do you miss do you miss home? Of course, I do. I mean, uh, home is home. Will always be home. I have my family there, my parents, my friends. It's like all the connections in the world I have in one place. Here, I also have connections, and I made very good friends. But it's a bit different because I barely get to see them sometimes. We barely mix our schedules. So it's, you really have to do an effort to see all the people. At home is so easy with that. That's true. But here you have to really make an effort to keep connections. That's, that's true. That's a bit hard sometimes. Okay, why do you think that is? It's because you are mostly friends with other crew and your schedule might not mix so much. So whenever they mix, you you might be tired after a flight or you will, might want to sit alone because <laughs> you also feel the need to sit by yourself sometimes after being surrounded by people all the time. So it's kind of hard to mix the schedules, I would say. But you make it like uh, I, I managed to do it because I put the effort for it. At the moment. <laughs> I, I would say this. In, in my first year in Etihad and in, in Abu Dhabi, um, I would say I was more outgoing, definitely more outgoing than, than now, even my first two years and uh, more friends and more, you know, 
parties a little bit and going outside and stuff. But now I'm a total introvert. I mean, not a total introvert, but I do enjoy being by myself. Sometimes I really want to uh, detach and uh, things like this. And um, yeah, I don't meet a lot of people outside of, let's say, work, home and, you know, just I don't go party much and stuff like that. But I think that comes with age as well. So it's not even necessarily the job, but it is also the job. It's also the job. There are people who just go out all the time. There are this kind of people that have the energy to always go out, always do things. I'm in between. Yeah, the activities that I want to do now are more like walking to the beach, going to the gym, going to the pool, you know, just meeting a friend, doing other stuff than, you know, partying and all that. So, but there are still people who are into that mood. So it depends on you. Of course, like for me, I always go out on layovers. I love them. I mm -hmm. love traveling. I'm still excited. Maybe after a few years, I will not be that excited. No, because sometimes I'm just going to a destination and I'll have a lazy layover. I'm not really going out because I visited the place like two times already and I know the city and um, I want to sleep more. Yeah, for me, it's uh, different. Like I give my best there. I do everything. <laughs> I do everything that I can. So I really enjoy the layovers. For me, it's amazing. I still, I'm still grateful for them. But yes, sometimes when I'm home, I want to also sit by myself or just recover or just chill. I want to learn something else. I think it's important also to have something else besides the job. Like yeah. Focus on learning something new or just going to the gym even like do other activities because you need to focus on something else. Do you think exercise is important in of this course, job? Of course, you need it. Like you really need it. And it's it's also tough. Like I'm, I struggle sometimes to be consistent with the gym and also and uh, eating food, healthy food and stuff. So it's can be challenging, but once you build the habit, you're good. Yeah. Building good habits. I think that's, that's that, it. Yeah, it's hard. But it's once hard. you do it, it's, it's all right. You're good. You're on the right path. <laughs> that's true. For me, it's, it's, um, I did kind of build the right habits in the sort of way in, that, in which I, I do go to the gym very often. And, you know, it's like part of a routine. It just happens. It just, oh, I wake up, I go to the gym, I eat breakfast afterwards. It just happens. Like, it's just, I don't think about it. I just do it. But then the hard part sometimes is to eat right. Oh, yes. And you do need to eat right in this job, you know, because if you eat donuts the whole day, you know, you're not going to have uh, the proper energy and, you know, all the uh, all the nutrition yeah, needs you, that you this need job requires exactly, and stuff like that. Exactly. So You consume a lot of energy. You have to recover sleep. You yeah. need to keep yourself healthy. It's very important. Healthy and fit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Get some sun also. Like, uh, if you want to do everything properly, it gets a lot of your time, a lot of yeah. your free time. Yeah. But it's also, I think, in, in normal jobs as well. Let's say if you have a job nine to five. You uh, should also do that. <laughs> absolutely. You should also strive to be healthy. You should strive to keep your weight in check. You should strive to, you know, eat right and, you know, get some sunlight, you know, get some um, exercise in. It's important. Those things, they help you with your longevity and... Uh, with your moods and with your health and everything, so. Yeah. Drawbacks of the job so far. In general, the cabin crew job out here. Well. I think we already talked about a bit of it. Yeah, we talked about a bit of it. Um, yes, I would say you can be very tired sometimes, but I don't know, I'm, I kind of manage it pretty well now. I mean, I don't, mm. I feel like I have enough free days to recover. Okay. So sometimes, yes, sometimes I'm very tired, but then I feel like I have like two, three days off. So mm -hmm. I, I have my time to recover, to do everything properly. Mm -hmm. um, Dubai life can be a bit challenging, as I've said. Um, it's like this big city life and you're getting lost in it and it's hard to keep connections and you have to do an effort to meet your friends. Mm -hmm. It depends on the style of person you are. If you're a lonely wolf. <laughs> I'm a lone wolf. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't mind, but I, and I enjoy my time alone, but I also need, uh, I need my, my, my people around me. You were always like this. I think you yes. are always, always kind of a person that spends time with other people yeah, and always. you need that, uh, how do you say socializing? You need socializing. Yeah. On I need socializing, but I need 
a quality socializing, yeah. you know, I need proper connection and stuff. So that's a bit hard and tricky here in Dubai. Mm-hmm. So you need to be selective of your people, of your friends, because uh, everything is an influence here. You need to not listen to <laughs> negativity. That can be like people can complain all the time. That's another thing. Listen, the cabin crews, generally speaking, across yeah. all airlines, you know, the galley talk, galley FM kind of thing complainers we're all complainers it's like yeah. a it's like a disease <laughs> yeah I, I, I exactly I feel a lot of times that I catch myself complaining about something and if I think about it I'm like this doesn't bother me that much you know I just yeah. hear it and it gets into my mind yeah so this can be a, it's the negative influence because mm-hmm. you're actually having a good life I mean you are living in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi You are getting paid well, you're traveling the world, you have enough free days, you can even manage to do something else besides the job, like as a hobby and stuff. Yeah, true. You got a lot of benefits, but this thing of complaining constantly just gets to your head and then you become ungrateful. So that has to be, that that should be changed. That's it. You know, be grateful for what you have, but always try for the better. Of course, you need to be grateful for what you have all the time, but yeah, let's try for more. <laughs> it's very weird to do a podcast with my sister, but yeah, here is, we are. It is, it here is we are. Weird. <laughs> but by the way, by the way, any advice for future cabin crews or future, you know, newbies that want this job? Um, any advice for them, let's say? I would say that you kind of need some experience before because a lot of people who don't have the experience before the job think that it's hard. For yeah. me, I've done, my first job was working in a pub. Then I worked in uh, the States in a restaurant. So that was harder than this. So when I see people complaining all the time about how hard it is, I'm like, no, it's not that hard. You just don't have the experience in uh, working, you know? So oh, yeah. everything will be hard. You oh, need yeah. to be punctual. You need to, it's a responsibility. If you didn't have that before, it ca- can be a bit quite uh, quite challenging in the beginning. Yeah. So it's gonna, but it's gonna build you as a person. Just leaving your country in first place is gonna build you up, build up character, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So I definitely recommend it to anyone to try this experience. A story can be different from person to person, honestly. Like I've heard people that complain, oh my God, they had such an awful experience or they met such, uh, I don't know, bad people for me. I. In, most in of the, the airline, people, in yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and uh, but most of the people that I meet are nice. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any problems so far, so it's what energy you put out there, also. Absolutely. About new joiners, yeah, I would say get some experience first, <laughs> and then just you know analyze, uh, be humble, listen to other what other other people say, and you know just. Training can be a bit challenging in the beginning. In Emirates, the training is, what, seven weeks or something like that? Yes, something like that. And for me, it was a bit challenging because I was waking up at 4 a.m. every day. Mm -hmm. So basically, you really need to be focused there because I was in the morning shift. So I was tired. I had to focus. Then I had to come back home, study some more. Then next day, the same. So morning shift was a bit tough okay but you just you survive you just do what you have to do you, you, you need to focus when you're in training that's the thing but like everybody it's it's studying it's that. it's basically the same as you know you study in college you study in high school for exams and stuff this is the same thing you know and you yeah. will pass you know you will pass it's not that difficult yeah. you have to pay attention you have to you know yeah. study what i would say about my new joiners also is that uh, they should be a bit mindful about the change that they're gonna go through mm. so when i for example when i got the golden call i wasn't ecstatic you know i was like okay <laughs> now i know that i'm gonna change my life completely i need i know that i'm gonna go through a lot of uh, different moments and i just prepared myself mentally And I feel like some of the new joiners that I've seen coming here are not prepared for that. For example, I met a girl who was just, um, was new and she was already very sad, missing her family, 
So huh. basically, first month of flying was not a pleasant experience because okay. she was missing her family. It was Christmas time, you know. It was so you cannot enjoy it properly if you're thinking of that and if you're like in your mind. If you're not, you know, pleased. If you're not. If you're just nostalgic and you don't realize. If you don't realize from before, that's this is the change you're gonna go through. It can mm-hmm. be quite challenging. Yeah. I agree. Like you have to think about yeah, it, guys. Yeah, you have to think about it. Once you, you know, you reach that golden call, you know, the, you get that golden call. Basically, uh, you have to understand what's going to happen next. Yeah. And you will just move, and you'll be by yourself, not with your family, not with your friends, but you'll move to a new environment completely. So you have okay. to take that in consideration, and you have to uh, accept it. Yeah, right. you're gonna miss a lot of events. I missed two of my best friends' weddings. Oh, I missed, weddings! Like, yeah. <laughs> I forgot okay. about weddings. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. You miss you like uh, you might fly on your birthday. You might uh, fly on Christmas, on New Year's Eve, depends sure. on where. So you have to take in consideration all of these things. All your life will change, but you, it's how you make it. Absolutely, absolutely, totally agree with that. Um, now, having said all of this, it is time for a roster reveal of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, I just want to uh, see what you have, what kind of flights you have for the past two months. So for this month, months. this month and the previous month. How is your roster like? Let's see. All right. The month of December, I had a nice roster, I would say. Mm-hmm. Because I went to Japan and Japan was my top, one of my top destinations. So nice. it was one of my dreams actually to reach Japan. So I had Narita and what I actually did, something my brother would never do because he's not as adventurous. What do you mean? I'm, I'm very adventurous. I don't know what she's no, talking about. No. So what I did was actually I um, slept in a capsule hotel, you know. And I just went in Tokyo, so it was amazing experience. Hey, it was kind I of like, like a CRC. I like to sleep in the bunks in our plane too. So it's, it's sleeping it's, in a capsule, you know, I will yeah. sleep in the capsule as well. No problem. You, will see. you would be lazy to go there. No, no, absolutely not. I can do it. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Ah, then I had... Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. How many, how many hours later? It was 30... Wait, let me check. Hmm. No, it was t- 27 hours. 27, 27 hours. hours. Not enough, but... You know, Not enough, but you make okay. the best out of it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Then I had uh, two days off and then I applied for live leave so that I could come to Phuket with you. Oh, yes. Yeah. We've <laughs> been to Phuket together, mini vacation. It was actually my vacation and she, I, just, I just jumped in. Yeah. I just disturbed his peace. Absolutely. It's fine. <laughs> we enjoyed our Phuket mini vacation. Yeah, it was very nice. Nice and pictures. So we were very lucky actually to manage to be off in the same time and just be there. It was... Yeah, both both of us in Thailand. You were for three or four nights? Uh, three. Three, three nights, nights, yeah. yeah. Cool. Then I came back home and I had a flight to London. Mm-hmm. I had London Gatwick. Then How many hours later? 24. 24, standard. Then I had one day off, actually two days off, and I had Seychelles. Nice. Very nice, very nice. But this one was short, like it was only 16 hours. It's only 16 hours layover because the flight is short also. But it's a very nice flight, so you're not very tired. So 16 hours there is just... You go, you see the beach, you lay in the beach a bit, yeah, you know, yeah. you enjoy so and then you go sleep. Very nice, yeah, right. <laughs> basically. Um, then I had three days off and Algeria. Okay. Algeria for two, for 24 hours. Never been. That's nice. Yeah, it was nice. I just, the hotel was right at the beach, so. Amazing. I just chilled. I took a walk at the beach. A, a bit chilly, but, you know, nice view. They have nice food as well? Yeah. Okay. Then I had two days off, one day and a half, let's say. Yeah. And for Christmas, I had Accra. Nice. <laughs> I had, I spent an uh, African Christmas. Nice. So it was actually nice. I enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I've been to Accra once, one time before. It's sector flight. So you fly to Accra. Mm-hmm. Then the second day you have a turnaround from Accra to Abidjan and back. Mm-hmm. And then another day in Accra. Okay, for the people that don't know where Accra is, what's the country? Ghana. Ghana. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So we went out, we had a Christmas dinner together, all the crew. 
It was really nice, actually. I made, made uh, really good friends there. That's awesome. What's yes. next? Next is two days off. And then I had Hyderabad. 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 <laughs> so that is, that is <laughs> India. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> and that is what I actually have tomorrow. So after this podcast, you know, tomorrow I'll have Hyderabad, yeah. India. Hyderabad. It's a turnaround. Yeah, well, a roughly turnaround. <laughs> three hours and a half going, three hours and a half coming back, something like that. Yeah. Mm. After this, uh, actually, I came back on 31st so that I had New Year's Eve free. I was free on New Year's Eve. I was in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. It was really nice. Not a lot of people can benefit from this. <laughs> Party time in Dubai for New Year and I was stuck in traffic. More on this later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I called him and he was stuck in traffic. So time of your life. Yeah. Then I you. had the first the free and then uh, on the second I went to Nice. Amazing. Name. Awesome. We don't have that in the Tihad. I hope it will uh, sometime soon. But I heard it's a really beautiful city. Yeah, yeah it's uh, amazing. And it's like the hotel is right at the beach. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I, I was walking, I landed, I was very tired. It's not such a long flight, but mm -hmm. you know, you wake up at five in the morning. So Six hours and a half flight. Yes. Like, yeah. So I was tired, but I just went out with one of a Romanian friend actually. And nice. uh, we just went through all the city. We did 11 kilometers without even knowing. Yeah. <laughs> So amazing city, amazing. Uh, how many hours layover? The layover was 24 hours, 24 okay. hours, 27 minutes. <laughs> That's but very, very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically once you land, because we landed in the daytime, mm -hmm. we just did everything and then we just slept and uh, in the morning we came back. Mm -hmm. Then after Nice, I had three days off, four actually, with the one coming back. Mm -hmm. Because I was going to Rio after, yes. so Rio was uh, my one of my dreams also. So we're already we already passed from the month of uh, December to January. Ah, right? yeah, so we're in January now. Yes, oh, I started nice. with Nice. Started with Nice. Okay, so Nice and then Rio. And Rio and okay. Rio was something else. Rio felt like vacation. So just explain to the viewers a bit the layover coupled with uh, like multi-sector. Yeah, thing. it's so same it? same as Accra multi-sector flight. So basically. I, we go to Rio, it's 13 hours and something flight, quite, uh, long. But quite long, but we had four hours sleep. That's very good. So I didn't feel it so tiring. Mm -hmm. And then the second day, and then you, you reach Rio, you have 24 hours. And then the second day you go to Buenos Aires and back. So you do a turnaround from Rio to Buenos Aires and back. And then another two days. So another 48 hours in Rio, which mm -hmm. was like, I did everything. I did the helicopter ride. I did hang gliding. I did the city tour. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. I did everything. So it felt like vacation to me. I had amazing crew. We were such a nice group. So it was And because one of, of the best. you have this amount of time in the layover, you get, you know, you get closer to the crew, you know, yeah, you, you yeah, that, become friends thing. and... Things like this. Yes, because uh, many layovers actually you start, you feel like you start all over with other people. You know, you meet new people, but everything is like two days with them and then with other people two days and same. But this one, it was like five days together. So uh, we got more close, we formed connections. It was really nice. By the end of the flight, we're friends. So mm -hmm. even the flight back was fun. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. nice. Really nice. Then uh, next is now I'm having three days off after Rio. So tomorrow I'm going to fly to Nice again because I bid for it. So they gave me two. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the same layover, right? The same uh, The same, time. same okay. timing, same. So I'm excited because this time I'm going to go to Monaco. Nice. Yeah. So and one more Nice in the layover and then? And then I have three days off. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have some back-to-back -back flights. <laughs> okay, what you know, are those? I'm, so basically you 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 only have the legal time between. The rest, you know, legal the, rest. You know, yeah. like one day between. Mm -hmm. So one is Bombay, mm -hmm. then Jeddah, mm -hmm. and then Prague. Prague. Wow. Prague is very nice. So basically they're quite connected to each other. So it's a block of days. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because Bombay and Jeddah are just turned around. So I'm not... There, I'm just going and coming back, and Prague is a layover, mm -hmm. 24, 25 hours actually. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One extra bonus. 
Yes, and then after Prague, I have two days off. Then I have. This is uh, this is Ahmedabad, right? Da, nu yeah. spune, nu spune, last of English is spun să nu parcă, nu știu să spun. Ahmedabad, yeah. Then I have right. Manchester layover. Ahmedabad is again turnaround, and yeah. then I have Manchester right after. Manchester, okay, how many hours? Manchester is 24 hours, and Standard. it's on the. Trading? On the beginning beginning of the month of uh, February. Actually. Okay, okay. So we're reaching the other month actually. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's a, a nice, good it's a good it's roster. A good roster. It's no, like, it's it's a good roster. You don't have too many flights. It's not that cluttered. You have a blend of layovers and turnarounds. This is what I'm saying. Yes, I hear a lot of people. I mean, not a lot, but I hear some people, you know, complaining about uh, how they're so tired. And I don't know. I have personally all of my rosters so far were actually nice mm -hmm. of course i had more challenging flights but i felt like i had enough time to rest between which that's is very very, very good yeah, yeah absolutely and that's one of the things like uh, i think in etihad we actually have a busier roster than you guys sometimes like more hours mm -hmm. but it just depends obviously okay if you have more hours you have better salary sometimes so yeah. that's also good because uh, when you're flying the salary is depending it depends on your flying hours so more flights more salary but then less flights you know more yeah more days off more calmness you know more relax so it's you know if you have a, a busy month and then you have a chill month that's the ideal situation right you make up for 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 the salary with some relaxed time with some more days off and peace so that's good as well exactly all right uh, any final thoughts upon this uh, interview this podcast overall i'm really grateful to be here that's good it's an amazing experience of course there are negative sides also but every job has them yeah and uh, i don't know it's just for me it's like a period of time i should be here like a few years to travel the world to just see whatever i want to find myself find what i want to do next so it's an amazing place to be for that for discovering yourself more and what you want to do So I highly recommend it to anyone. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gents, that this has been it for this video. Don't forget to give a like. <laughs> That's the spirit. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not subscribed yet. I know you guys like this type of content and I've seen the response on the previous, uh, let's say, long format videos. I'll try to deliver a bit more of this, but I do not promise, you know, My life is one day is like this, one day is like that. So it's really, it really depends. But I hope I, I will manage to do more of this in the future. And uh, yeah, greetings from your Etihad and Emirates, Emirates crew. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.